I want to be very clear. We do not expect harmful levels of radiation to reach the West Coast, Hawaii, Alaska, or U.S. territories in the Pacific. That is the judgment of our Nuclear Regulatory Commission and many other experts. Furthermore, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and public health experts do not recommend that people in the United States take precautionary measures beyond staying informed. And going forward, we will continue to keep the American people fully updated, because I believe that you must know what I know as president. Okay, welcome to the broadcast. This is Hattrick Penry, and the show is titled, broadcast is titled, Hattrick Penry Unbound. And I am a Plumegate researcher, and I write about Plumegate, and talk about Plumegate on the radio, and do videos on YouTube about Plumegate, and I watch to see who others are talking about Plumegate and who's not talking about Plumegate and this massive cover-up, multi-agency, and the thousands of fatalities. It's like an invisible 9-11 that nobody really knows about. And it's not just myself, others, Shazam and Miss Milky the Clown and Rad Chick and a number of others are quite aware of what has actually taken place, the, the magnitude of it, it, it all. And when you think about it, it does weigh heavy on the mind, especially the fact that <laughs> No one's been held accountable. We're coming up on the on what I call uh, two AF two after Fukushima, right? It's been nearly two years after the uh, a global changing change the whole. Okay, so we take the burden off by educating the masses, and things will work out if we do that. So I just wanted to point that out. Now again, who is talking about Plumegate? Who's helping me out? Just a couple of the bigger names, real quick. Uh, Shazam, of course. That's my uh, friend who's a bit of a uh, no, expert. He's kind of an analyst and a consultant for me. Uh, Miss Milky the Clown, Rad Chick, Mary Greeley, 1954, Nibiru Magic, 2012, Red Button Studio. Those are just a couple quick ones that are, you know, carrying the bulk of my stuff on YouTube, so I do thank them. Now today, what I want to do again is I'm going to I've got a collection of some of my better screen captures from the NRC, Nuclear Regulatory Commission Freedom of Information documents, which are free and available to the public. You can dig in there and look yourself, and I always suggest people do and, and take the load off because right now I tell you they control the information flow, and it's being released on their terms as they want it to be released. The documents that recently I've broke into this week, and some are contained within what I look at today because they refer to the president and the president's worst-case scenario. Some of these are just recently released, and it's as if they waited until Obama got into office, and then, boom, there's this big release of documents from the 20th, and some of them are, are quite incriminating. And the, the overall scope of them all, when you look at it, it's very incriminating. On the White House played the, the lead role in the end, and this first screen capture we look at here, again, there's a link from the a blog talk, uh, just a second, this is my scan, no malicious items. Well, I tell you, there's something strange going on with my computer, and maybe malware bytes doesn't pick it up, but there is definitely some, in fact, since my broadcast of the 15th, <laughs> my computer has not been running as it normally has. So let me clear this off my screen. I'm just running a screen, a uh, virus scan. Okay. First document, and there's a link again, I say, from my blog talk uh, post for today. If you want to follow the link and look at the screen captures, if not, I'll do my best to describe what I'm seeing because some of them are uh, plume models, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So the first screen capture is a March 12th email from a gentleman by the name of David Liu. And this it's important as well as uh, myself and Shazam have discussed everyone pay attention to the names involved, who these are being sent to, the dates of the email as well, because ultimately you want to begin to know who knew what and when and, and begin to paint a timeline and a picture also by names of individuals who are involved. And you'll find that it's it's quite huge. There's a lot of names involved, a lot of people involved, and not just in the NRC. Again, these documents pertain to the NRC. There's other agencies in this first screen capture, for instance. We see it's not just the NRC involved. They're going to need help across the board from every agency is going to have to help, right? Because if one agency actually does its job, if one agency in this country actually started doing its job as it's supposed to, 
Well, it'd have to investigate all the others and start bringing charges against them and hauling them into court. You know, and that's a firm belief, I say, because like, two years have passed now and nothing's happened with Plumegate. From David Liu to uh, Bill Dean, Daryl Roberts, Peter Wilson, James Clifford, Sunil Wika Cody, Chris Miller, Raymond Lorson, Daniel Collins, Pamela Baker, Tracy Walker. And I'm laughing because my cat, Lola, I'm in the middle bedroom, the door's closed, the cats are out, but my wife's old computer frame is sitting out there, and she hops up on top of it, and I've watched her when the door's cracked. She can get one paw on top of the door handle and one at the bottom, and I kid you not, she is trying to rotate it because she's seen me rotate that door handle. <laughs> she's out there clicking on it now, so I hope she goes away. <laughs> You see, I can't escape them. You can't escape cats, man. They track you down. They're trackers is exactly what they are. <laughs> okay, it says, Borchardt provided update. And that's a guy I'm pretty sure Bill Borchardt is who they're talking about there. He's a character you I see time and time again in these documents. Again, we need to build a dossier so I can then be, tell you who this guy is and then give you a little bit of information on him. It says, still operating on limited information. Again, this is March 12th, one day after the meltdown. Deputies meeting at the White House with significant focus on the nuclear event. Two NRC staff dispatched, one you said USAID and other on not on commercial flight. NRC is minding its role and allow the White House to carry the messages. NRC has four objectives. One, continue monitoring to the situation best that we can given limited information. Two, outreach to IAEA and proposing IAEA as a point of contact for Japan. Three, further development of NRC questions and answers, once that is associated with what we know about Japan. We will need to be very factual and non-speculate. Second set of questions and answers will focus will be on the domestic industry. Expect the public slash media focus to turn toward domestic in the next day or so. Four, Interaction with DHS and federal agencies, including plume plot, possible exposure models, and monitoring on the West Coast. FEMA has stood down and operating under normal weekend staffing. So I'll try to be brief here. Uh, clearly, we see the White House is running the show. Later, we get to see about worst-case scenario that the White House had those models run. And we can look and see that interaction with the DHS and federal agencies, plume plot, exposure models, monitoring West Coast. They were aware of the potential of the plume. They know all about Chernobyl, all about Three Mile. That's indicated in the documents. And also FEMA has stood down. FEMA's been told to stand down. Or actually FEMA, when you think about in an emergency, if you begin to look into them, they kind of control and run everything. So FEMA, maybe of their own accord, has decided to stand down. I shouldn't say they've been told to stood down. They're just standing down is all I can tell you. Now, the, the, the troublesome, worrisome thing is two of these agencies, DHS and FEMA, in fact, when you look at the whole Plumegate cover-up, EPA is involved, CDC, they all have to be involved to hide this huge, massive incident that's happened, right, on our own soil that all of them have to be helping each other. Because, again, I say if one agency decided to you know, execute their job as they're supposed to, all the others would be in trouble too. FEMA standing down, they're tasked for their safety, aren't they? That's worrisome. Taiwan, France, United Kingdom, other places got rainwater warnings. Taiwan didn't let their kids go to school in the rain, while rainwater was 10 times more radioactive in California, and kids went to school. In France, they were given rainwater and green leafy vegetable uh, warnings. We weren't. We were directly in the path with the Pacific uh, jet stream that all the commercial jets catch to save fuel coming back over here from the Orient. Well, that's what carried it here. That's what carried it here. And, yes, we got hit. I have an article that I have screen captured from Alexander Higgins that says RADnet monitors rigged, EPA rigged the RADnet monitors. And it was clear because after they were done tinkering with them, the baseline was lower than before. Hence, after the meltdown of Fukushima, multiple meltdowns, we're expected to believe the baseline, the standard level of radiation across the board, has actually dropped and gone down, right? The most ludicrous thing in the world. No, well, I'm not going to get angry today, though. I'm going to channel my energies into my song and recording later on. And next week, by the way, I'm going to play you the demo of my song. It's called Titled Rest Your Head. That's going to come out sometime next week. I should have it mixed down and the vocals done. Okay, the next screen capture. Uh, okay, again, this is Chuck Castro. It's about Mark 1 losing containment. I spoke about this yesterday, and I think on the 15th as well. Let's see what Chuck Castro says, and he's a... Uh, 
Um, how should I phrase a big wig with the NRC? He's high up there. Let's see what he says about station uh, blackout. Now, I don't deny these guys have knowledge. Mo, they're experts. They know all about it. Now, whether they're going to be honest or whether they're truly working for the public 100%, maybe that could be a question. But their level of knowledge, I don't deny. They're, all these uh, uh, gentlemen are and, and women have done their schooling and obtained their degrees, and they, they know what they're talking about. Now, can the man be bought and woman be bought? Yes, we know that for a fact. So here's Chuck Castro saying, I would just ask for all their recommendations. You know, they've got all the science. They have these codes that can run this event, that have run this event. They ran it for Peach Bottom. Okay, that's also one I should talk about where they have already run a kind of a Fukushima-type thing at Peach Bottom right here in the States, just a simulation. They ran this event for a number of sites. And, you know, you may just want to reach out, and we may just want to reach out and ask them what their recommendations are based on Melkor. And I don't know. I can't remember all those code names, but there's a lot of different names. Do they have recommendations about the crust that forms and keeping water on it and keeping the right pH, all that stuff? And, you know, if we end up with a molten core and then you talk about the time for the concrete to disassociate, you know, that NUREG says it's a couple of inches an hour, you know, and, of course, that Mark I containment is the worst one and all the containments we have, of all the containments we have. And it's literally, you know, this NUREG tells you that in a situation, station blackout, you're going to lose containment. There's no doubt about it. NUREG is like a manual, a guide manual, and, and I gather from what I read about it, you know, if you can look into it and kind of infer from it, it gives you possible scenarios and stuff like that. So you could refer to it and say, well, the NUREG manual says clearly a Mark I containment. If you don't have power to it for a certain amount of time, you'll have a meltdown. That criticality, that melt core, what they call it, will melt through the concrete a couple of inches an hour, you know, says Chuck Castro. So keep in mind, on the 19th, the documents we've been looking at this week and some of the ones coming up on the 20th, you know, <laughs> Clearly, we, there's been a melt. There has been a melt by then, and later on, they're all sure about it. If they're not sure about it now, they are later. But you can look and say, well, by the 19th, hey, how long have you been without power down there? Clearly, in the documents, they're just getting ready to roll power in. And then they got to hook up fuse boxes and circuit boards and, and repair panels. And Oh, it's a mess. So how long ha have these... Uh, these reactors been without power? Question. The good question. And by the 19th, well, they still don't have it. What's that? Eight days? Right here. Wow, this is incredible. Because, okay, I, I should read this again. If we end up with a molten core, which we know now they did, they did. And, and now I'm hearing that it's melted down into the ground and it's hitting the water level and steam's coming up through cracks. Is this true or not? I don't know because, again, there's a whole lot of rumor mongering going on, and it's not an accident. It's, I put it to you that the same people who's behind all this, they're running their little psyops at the same time, and it's very distracting from what? From these documents that we absolutely can prove. So here's Castro saying in a station blackout, uh, there's no doubt about it. You're going to lose containment. Lose containment, that means we have an effluent, which is the NRC's friendly, wonderful, happy word for radioactive discharge. You have a radioactive discharge. Okay, next screen capture. Mike, Rob, this is the Cali doses. Okay, i got to read my little uh, notation here. This is the famous one. This went up on e, &E News at some point, and, and it was titled something about controversy over California doses or whatever. Well, no controversy to me. Once you read all the documents, it's clear what they know about and what's going on. They know they're being recorded. They know the Freedom of Information Act. So they're very careful what they can and can't say. Still, we're able to infer with a great deal of clarity kind of what they knew and when they knew it. And it doesn't look good, folks. It doesn't look good. And I have a screen caption here from the Sherman Mangano study. Maybe we'll get a chance to look at that and talk about fatalities. Mike, Rob, this is inaudible. I have a question for you. This request for doses in California projected with, I guess, worse case assumptions, is that correct? Inaudible. Mr. Lewis, I believe the doses that we saw from DITRA represented a source term of 100% of the inaudible. Again, a lot of convenient inaudibles. The particular tapes I would listen to. I can't go through zillions of hours of batches of tapes. But if I knew a specific one, I would like to hear some of these because I can probably pick out what they're saying. I have excellent ears. That's because I do a lot of recording and mixing, and you have to. Source term, 100% of the inaudible. Very convenient inaudible. 
Mike, okay, and we're, is the information being considered for releasing publicly, like we do with the press release? Again, I've been clear, the press releases were one thing. The information for the industry, that was a whole nother. Public information, very nice, very happy, things look good, nothing to worry about, everything's fine. The other for the industry, a little bit worse. Not the whole hardcore, real worst case scenario still, that's, you know, very rarely do we, I found in one place where they're kind of talking about three source terms from one, uh, one, two, I'm talking about, let's see, three, four source terms. It was one and two, and then it was a couple, it was three, two, I think, one, two, and three, and then two spent fuel pools, and it was called a worst case or something. I remember looking at that and thinking, well, that's getting more in the direction of a worst case, right? What is a worst case at Fukushima? Well, there's six facilities there. If four are hard hit, well, let's go with that. We have four criticalities and the spent fuels. Let's worst case, wow, that's big. That's Chernobyl times what? A lot. And don't listen to Arnie Gundershill. He's paid not to talk about the FOIA documents and to downplay everything. And, you know, it's pretty sad, too, because it, it, you know, I consider him to be quite insane. Absolutely insane, right? Well, what else conclusion can I draw except shut down all the plants as soon as possible, release hidden alternative technologies, suppress technology, suppress patents, and get us out from under this thing, right? But I don't hear that from anyone right now. There's one guy. Wait a minute. Uh, Stein. Matthew Stein is his name. When technology fails, hey, I, I remembered that. That guy will tell you that. He'll tell you what all it's going to take to systematically, methodically begin to decommission and shut down these plants, right? Not to get distracted there, but seriously, nobody's, wow, I think it's quite insane the world has gone mad or they're just totally uh, separate from this information. They simply do not know. It's one of the two things because once you really study nuclear power, nah, your only conclusion is shut it all down as quick as you can. My gosh, how soon can we do it? What's it going to take? You know, how much is it going to cost? I'll help pay for it. Let's do it. Okay, so he says, is this being considered for releasing publicly like we do with the press release? Question mark. Mr. Lewis, which information are you speaking about? Mike, I'm talking about these projected dose models, the models that you, the ones that you are doing and coordinating with other agencies. Is there some thought about releasing that publicly? Mr. Lewis, we have not had that discussion this time. Mike, and don't take that as a, a suggestion to an audible I'm just curious as to how we came uh, about this, how we came about it. Mr. Dorman, Mike, this is Dan. No, no, we're not planning any press release with this information. This is a projection that we were requested to run. Separate from our being requested to run that, we got this DOE briefing package that had this other DITRA run in it. And we're not, I don't know what prompted theirs or all of the assumptions that went into theirs, but it obviously caught our attention, and we are looking to get what we think would be more realistic projections. Other questions? I should stop there and say you can kind of see the direction of that right now. If it looks too bad, not good enough. If it's another one that looks better, maybe this is more realistic. And you know what? Let me tell you something. We had satellites that can do reconnaissance and, and give you the date on a quarter. You can lay a quarter on the ground, and that military satellite can read the date off that quarter to you. Okay, just looking at the uh, the pictures, the high-def pictures released later, you can clearly see the damage, the literal physical damage at Unit 3, Unit 4, Unit 1, Unit 2. It's catastrophic. It's incredible. So right off the bat, and you know, we had all our ships all over the place, and there's information in here that they knew our ships were getting blasted, right? And they're just sitting there going up and down the coast scanning for radiation. It's the craziest thing in the world. You know, as Hatcher County president, I said, get our ships out of there. Load our boys up. we got military bases. Get them out as quick as you can. I don't care where you put them, but get them out of Japan. Too many rads on their nads. You know what I'm saying? you got to get them out of there. Do you love your uh, men and women in uniform or not? Well, folks... In the document we've been going over this week, there's plenty of information in the back. Well, well, let, let me get to it. Okay, Miss Howe says, Dan, just one comment. And Rob, this is Linda Howe in Region 4. Rob, I can talk with you offline about some background information for California. The DITRA and DOE runs, again, DITRA does plume modeling, and DOE runs, they're referring to plume models and modeling, for California may have been prompted by queries from the state. Because the state has been conducting interagency conference calls and DOE, EPA, HHS, has been part of those calls. Our regional state liaison officer is also monitoring that. But there is some background that is politically sensitive that I can share with you offline. Again, this was in the run-up to Obama's election. 
And I tell you, Alex Jones, alternative media, a lot of YouTube, all of mainstream, they were all in cahoots, all in cahoots to protect this guy. I know it's hard, difficult to understand, but Ron Paul is a carrot in the donkey, right? Carrot in front of the donkey, and it never panned out. Quite convenient for Obama, who ends up being re-elected. I remind you in his election uh, uh, inaugural speech, the original one, he said something about the cold winter ahead. Interesting, because we're kind of like going to suffer from a cold nuclear winter here. As that's what I call it anyway. Present source term. This one I added. This is from the document we were looking at this week. Jim Wiggins. Okay. Speaking of deposition, things like that, a uh, couple news. We got, we reached agreement with NARAC. Again, NARAC does the plume modeling, source term plume models. We reached agreement with NARAC on what, let me also say the president's source term, the one that, you know, you had agreed to. Chairman Jacksco. Yes. Jim Wiggins. And it's, it's been a bit challenging to get runs from NARAC, but we understand they're running those now. Chairman Jacksco, okay. Jim Wiggins, and you know, it took some cajoling with them. They had some issues with how the source term was, was stated. Chairman Jacksco, okay. Jim Wiggins, a source term, again, a source term, I should clarify this, is a source of radiation. It could be a spent fuel pool that's going without cooling and it's overheated. The water could slosh out in an earthquake, as they talk about in these documents, how much sloshed out in the earthquake, and then it begins to overheat. Um, it could be a criticality in a reactor. Any substantial source uh, emanation of radiation they have to factor in as a quote-unquote source term. Is a lot of source terms? Maybe they don't want to hear about that one. Is it just a couple source terms? Maybe that's the run that looks good that we're going to go with that one. Who decides these things, right? Whoever made a poor decision, whoever did very poor decision, because from what I've been seeing just from independent sources, we got hit with a lot more, a lot more than they claim. Okay, so in this one, I wanted to point out and save this because, quote, unquote, the president's source term, right? This is referring to the president. They don't say Obama in there, but hey, he was a president at the time. They're not talking about the president of your local Moose Lodge, right? They're really not. Or the president of RCA Recording. They're not talking about that. They're really not. They are talking about the president of the United States. He has to, you know, if he's not paying attention to Fukushima when it goes down, well, I tell you, he's got to be the worst awful president we've ever had to totally ignore it, not know anything about it, not be intimately involved with it. The largest industrial disaster of our time. I pray we don't have anyone bigger than that. I really do. And we got the one right up near New York. Off the top of my head, think of it, Oyster Creek or whatever it is out there. They've been worried about that for years and years and years. And you know when it goes down, if you look at a 10-mile and 50-mile evacuation zone, you tell me you're going to evacuate all of New York because Tokyo got hit. And they knew about it, and the evidence here is in the documents. They knew Tokyo. Was, I, got the plume, I got the plume maps. I got the plume maps. So, yeah. Yeah, they knew Tokyo was going to get hit. Yeah, they knew all those ships with their soldiers and Navy men on it. Yeah, they knew they were going to get hit. But if they had said, look, get out and get them out now, you know, if they said that, oh, panic, all of a sudden the nuclear industry doesn't look. All of the states are beginning to ask for their potassium iodine that they're supposed to stock. They're supposed to have it all around these nuclear plants in case something happens so you or I can have our potassium iodine to protect our thyroid. It's critical. It's critical. It's one, at least one facet of the gym to help protect you from uh, radioactive uh, meltdown and the fallout from it, right? It's, it's nice to have anyway. Well, Truth be told, they don't really have them stocked up. They can't produce them, whatever. Uh, there's a big stink there because going to Japan, we're shipping them over there, and our guys are picking them up going to Japan. So clearly you need potassium iodine if you're near a meltdown. Don't you think we should have them near every nuclear reactor here? Well, let's look into that because I'm told they don't have them stocked all over the place, and they're not ready to, to roll them out of a warehouse, and, and you have to keep replacing them. They're only good for so – I have some thyroid safe in my bug-out bag. It's probably all going to sit there and collect dust, right? But I've got them, at least at the time, and I thought maybe, hey, who knows? Who knows? Better safe than sorry. Of course, you got to go know when to take them, too. And if you don't, then you're just sitting there with a bunch of pills. You don't even know when to take them. Okay, next screen capture. I'm looking at the president's case again. Jim Wiggins, yeah, I, you know, I still won't let anybody use the word worst case in the room here. Chairman Jasko, yeah. Jim Wiggins, because there's about five worst cases. Chairman Jasko, right. Jim Wiggins. What, what's the, the president's case, male participant? It's, it's bounding. It includes the, the fuel in the three reactors, the fuel in the four spent fuel pools. It does not include the common spent fuel pool around Unit 4, and that's one my mom was always talking about. Don't forget that common spent fuel pool, because that's where she's saying that's where the, uh, the bulk of the fuel is being stored. 
nor reactors five and six or any spent fuel pools there. Maybe they had reason to because five and six were the least damaged. They had a diesel running cooling to one, and the other one seemed to be in a stabilized condition from what I gather out of these documents. So it does not include the common spent fuel pool. Well, let's hope that somehow that didn't overheat. And that one's in the ground, if I'm not mistaken, between the, uh, the actual reactors in the ground between the facilities, between each unit. So the president's model, what's the president's case, the president's model? It includes the fuel in the three reactors, the fuel in four spent fuel pools. Well, man, I'm going to tell you what, if that's the model, if that is the model that Obama got, <laughs> I mean, that that's bad. That is, I, what else can I say? I mean, it's like a Chernobyl was what, you know, and it's not even in that jet stream. It was off to the side. I've, I've looked into this. You can't compare them as an exact comparison, no. But there are similarities. They're both a nuclear freaking meltdown, and we're talking the Northern Hemisphere, right? That's close enough for me to start comparing the two. So very worrisome here. This isn't obviously why I selected it for my Hattie's Choice because, wow, right there. I mean, that's in, what does that indicate to you guys? I mean, you form your own a conclusion on this. I can only tell you my opinion is I feel very confident the president's case is the president of the United States. What was his – what was his – uh, plume modeling, what was he asking for? Well, it's quite clear. The fuel in four spent fuel pools, and it includes the fuel in the three reactors. And was he talking one, two, and three? Because number three, ladies and gentlemen, was the MOX fuel, the mixed plutonium oxide. Ugh, man. Mm. You know, I'm going to play again what Obama told us. I'm going to continue to play that until, you know, I don't know, until I come up with something else. Okay, next one. Presence run in Cali and Hawaii. Jacksco. Okay, that's good. Well, I appreciate it. And yeah, I think that's that's it for now. So thanks. And you know, there was one other question on top of my mind, but I can't remember it now. Jim Wiggins. Well, we can say that, you know, the PAR protective action uh still looks good. Chairman Jacksco. Yeah, okay. Jim Wiggins, that's always an important thing. Chairman Jacksco, okay. Jim Wiggins. The PAR looks good, and we'll let you know what these NARAC, what the president's run results in, in California, Hawaii, and those places. We'll make sure you know that. Chairman Jacksco, okay, good. Jim Wiggins, and then we'll have to figure out how redacted, 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 redacted. Okay, well, again, redaction, I've been very clear that I can't see any reason to redact anything unless you've committed a crime and you don't want someone to know about it. It's not industrial secrets. It's a failed mark when containment's like the old Corvair. I make an analysis. Who wants to steal the schematics to the old Corvair that when you had an accident 20 miles an hour, the steering wheel would go through your chest and impale you? Who wants to steal those designs from the Mark I containment that's extremely dangerous? It's a failed design. You should read some of the documents that I've been reading about what they knew in the 70s, what they knew in the 70s about them. But once you've produced this product and you've shipped it all around and everyone's got a reactor going, you can't very well say, oh, we've got a reactor. Bring them all back. Bring the reactors back. We made a boo-boo in the design. Very dangerous. Bring them on back. No, no. In fact, the cancer industry is not complaining. I guarantee it. Guarantee it. American Cancer Society has American Cancer Society uh, millions of dollars just sitting in a fund. Is my understanding they don't they'll treat cancer forever. It's very profitable to do so. You can't cure cancer. You can't, and you have to keep making cancer. It can't just stop of its own accord because you clean the environment up. They have to have cancer. A huge booming industry depends on it. people's jobs. People's jobs depend on us getting cancer. Are you a good American citizen? Well, then you won't mind getting cancer for your country and doing your duty and helping someone with their job, right? Next screen capture. Sent April 2 from Hawk PMT. It's a committee of people is what I gather. To Todd Jackson, Marie Miller, Chuck Castro, Elmo Collins. Attachments, assessment of the need for protective actions in Tokyo, relaxing protective action criteria. Okay, Jacksco went out right off the bat and said 50 miles broke all the records. My understanding was you could have, they only did the 10 miles before. Now he said 50 miles. Red flag, everyone wants to know how bad it was. Well, he must have known something to say, be safe, 50 miles. And then beyond that, had he really done the right thing, is to get our troops out of there, get them Navy vessels out, 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 load up our guys, just get them out, give them their island back, close down the bases, and get out. Get out! But no, that didn't happen. Why? 
because that would be really more realistic. And that would, again, well, that shows the rest of the world how serious the accident was. And what does that show them? Well, that nuclear power is very dangerous. And you've got to ask yourself, why do we have a nuclear plant in our country? It's subject to the eco-terrorism that General William S. Cohen talked about in 1997 by remotely setting off volcanoes, remotely causing earthquakes through the use of electromagnetic waves. General William S. Cohen in 1997, our U.S. general said that. Hello, hello. You think he was making it up? You think he just woke up one day and said, I'm just going to, I don't know, off the top of my head, just come up with something crazy. No, he, he knew. He knew. How did he know? Hey, we invented it. <laughs> we invented eco-terrorism. Seriously. All right, now to get up on a tangent. Todd, it says, unfortunately, this didn't get back to us on this shift. Not a problem. We will pass on that. The call may come later today. Nothing we need now. Were you aware that the National Security Council said no to the NARAC run requested by the ambassador? I have attached the email. Okay, let me stop right there and go back over that and explain to you what that is. The NARAC, again, is the plume modeling and the, you know, it's like NILU early on. They crank out these graphs. You can see where it's going to float to and the prevailing winds and the level, level of intensity, et cetera, et cetera, right? Very revealing. The ambassador he's referring to, let me get a sip of my coffee one moment. It's kind of cold here in Florida and, and rainy and wet for a change, so I have a cup of coffee today. The ambassador is a Japanese ambassador. Now, it's not going to be the first time I've read or probably the first time he's denied a plume model. I've read before White House is denying to this Japanese ambassador this particular plume model. Well, right here the guy says, were you aware that the National Security Council said no to the NARAC run requested by the ambassador. The ambassador to China apparently comes to them and says, look, I got information on this, this number of source terms. Can I get a run? Can you guys help us out with a run? National Security Council, I'm gathering from what I intuit from this, says no. No, we won't do that run for you. No, we don't want to alarm anyone or, and especially, make the nuclear industry look bad. You know, they spend millions of dollars tracking guys like me every year. Really seriously. That, and they hacked in my computer and zapped my freaking uh, movie I spent hours doing last night. I found it in this weird roaming application thing. I can't even explain it to you. I don't know what happened, but it, it's weird. So they spent all this money tracking us to know what we're talking about. Meanwhile, when you actually look at these four-year documents, oh, they hide everything in the world. They hide everything in the world. No wonder they're after us, right? Because a good defense is a good offense. You don't need defensive your offense all over them, right? They're all over us countering with blogs and other social media forms, YouTube channels that either talk about radiation or some superficial aspect or don't even talk about it at all, right? There's a whole lot of titillating um, tabloid type stuff going on right now. Okay, no one's jumping all over me if I talk about Bigfoot. They'll leave me alone. I got Bigfoot show after Bigfoot show. But if I hit on something like a giant conspiracy cover-up that's provable, well, you're going to come upon some rough waters. I'll put it that way. Clearly here we see we're doing the damn courteous thing for our neighbors, right? The courteous. And we sell them these plants. The GE is my understanding and is the design and the builder of a lot of these plants, the Mark I and all this kind of stuff. They're the big ones, right? Them and Bechtel. You cannot get a NARAC run. You cannot get a plume model run. We don't care. We don't want you to know how bad it is. Oh, you know something we don't know? Oh, it could be that many source terms? No, no. You don't get it. You don't get it. And, you know, if, if Japan had hard feelings against us right now, I wonder why. I wonder why they might have hard feelings against us. I have to ask myself that. Would they have reason to, I wonder, after all I've read in these FOIA documents? Hmm. Not that TEPCO is not a bunch of liars and their government is not a bunch of liars. But I'm talking about the Japanese people like us, like you and I, the poor folks that don't have any say in anything at all because the government runs it all. It's fascism all over the planet. Okay. Unit 3 is dry. Boil off on 2. Yeah, here's an interesting one. Male participant. Again, male participant. Why can't we find out who these people are? Aren't you proud of your industry? I would shout my name aloud if I worked for a good recording company and said, yeah, I'm uh, with RCA, recording company. Man, we're, we only hire good artists, and we're on up front, and we never rip them off, right? But if, you're, if your organization isn't that good, you're not proud to say who you are. I just don't see how they can't know who who is. We just don't know. He's just some random guy. I don't know who it was. His name's Male Participant. Well, I tell you right now, male participant, I got a lot on him. This guy's been doing it. He's all over the place in these and he's guilty of quite a bit as well. First name male, last name participant, right? Find this guy. Get that guy. Okay, male participant, just a question. Chuck said that they think that Unit 3 pool is dry. 
Do they still, redacted, redacted, do they still see a vapor plume coming off Unit 3? Male participant, negative. Another male participant, okay. So they think that all of the steam in the path was the evaporation of the Unit 3 pool, and that's now completed? Next male participant, yes. The other male participant, we'll shoot you a one-page fax if you can figure out how to use the fax form. Now he goes on to talk some stuff. Oh, at the bottom they talk about sloshing water, sloshing out. Let me read this. Some of the things that would make that calculation, I would think, a little uncertain would be as when this earthquake hit. The slosh of water that might have sloshed out of that pool might have been pretty significant. So these pools are not invulnerable to earthquakes of this magnitude. Ryan, there's a letter sent, if I'm trying to think of who it was, but it's questioning a couple of our plants on fault lines, and it's saying, look, our calculations say in X number of years we're likely to have an earthquake over this particular um, earthquake uh, a mark, and, and shouldn't we, we be concerned about that? So in an earthquake of a big enough magnitude, literally in these uh, spent fuel pools, you can slosh the water to keep them cool. Can slosh, they're open. It can slosh right out. It can just slosh out. Again, it's only nuclear power. It's like only millions of people die when there's a meltdown. Chernobyl, over 900,000. Don't go to IAEA or WikiLeaks. Or seriously, seriously, or Wikipedia, I mean. Don't go there. You want to look at independent little guys doing the studies. For Chernobyl, it's Yablokov and Nestorenko. Costs and, uh, Chernobyl, costs and consequences to the, of the disaster to the people and environment. I put links up on my these broadcasts. If you go back and look, I've, and on my HP blog, all the links are there. And on Uncovering Plumegate, you can go and see all these studies, the Bird study, the Chernobyl study, the Fukushima, Mangano, Sherman study. They're all there if you want to look at the fatality numbers. And, and it's hard. I mean, I, I don't deny that the videos of all the deformed kids in, in Chernobyl, and they have, they have like hospitals with whole wards full of def horribly deformed kids just screaming and making noise. It's very difficult to watch. Again, like I say, I took the day off the other day. It's... It hits your psyche pretty freaking hard thinking about it, and no one seems to care, and they keep on plodding along with nuclear energy as if they're, as if nothing's happened. That's absolutely insane. It's like my agricultural commissioner here in Florida talking about the drought without mentioning chemtrails one. He absolutely will not. And, you know, every state has a budget for uh, um, weather modification. They spray silver iodide and all sort of stuff. They're all, Texas, as my understanding, pays the most each year for weather modification. Their state has a budget. You know, so he's got to know about it, but he doesn't mention it. Neither does Bill Quinlan on TV20 News during games of Florida. And it's very strange when you look at it and say, hmm, they must know. It's taken me less than a year to accumulate this knowledge. Less than a freaking year on a laptop. And I know enough people should be in jail if you look at the Plumegate documents. Wow. You know, if I had my ways, a whole bunch of people would be in jail. I mean, you boggle your mind. Again, mass arrests on an unprecedented scale. Until I see that, I know the fascist machine is still going to roll on. They'll even throw one to the, you know, put in jail every once in a while, the Spitzers and the Blagojeviches of the world. Yes, every once in a while they throw one of them under the bus, right? He didn't do the plan 100%. The guy went 90%. That wasn't good enough. <clears throat> throw him under the bus. I, I get that. I get that. But high-level guys, no. Presidential pardon, that always kicks in at the right time, doesn't it? we got no justice. Zero. Absolute zero. I look at the Justice Department of Justice website today. They're proud of this and proud of that, but I look at them and say, man, I just plume gate. Why don't you hire me down there? I'm not a lawyer, but what I do is I'm a manager and I'm an organizer, right? And I'm a generalist. I'll tell the lawyers what to do and I'll, I'll get them going to oversee them. That's what I do. I don't need to be a lawyer. I oversee the team that's doing the investigation and prepping the case and getting ready to issue indictments and put people in jail that you should have issued at the very damned least rainwater warnings. Oregon did it with Chernobyl in 1986. Right, and we detected stuff all over then in Oregon and Michigan. It's all in the records if you people want to look into it. I'm not making any of this up. I'm just telling you what I've read and my research because I'm not paid by some Dow Chemical or GE to have a specific version. Right, I just look and 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 I look for the worst of the worst is what I'm looking for. I found it. I found it in Plumegate. It's incredible. It's incredible. Even more incredible is no one seems to know or really seems to care, but a handful of people. And again, for those who are following, for those who are participating and posting my stuff around, you know what, my hat's off to you because let me tell you something, uh, that's it. Well, that's us, man. That We're the guys. We're the ones doing it. They won't talk about the big three, the Pentagon child porn downloaders. They don't talk about the 7,800 veterans. Veterans now suing DOD, Army, CIA, 
all sort of mustard gas experiments, LSD experiments, septal implants to control the mind. Granted, only a handful had those done to them. Yes, when you look into it, but hey, seriously, they all got used. It's horrible, horrific. No one's really being held accountable. They're really not. That's worrisome, very worrisome. No one seems to care. No one's being held accountable. Just a few is even talking about it. So the resistance, not not Alex Jones. It's not anywhere on, it's not in alternative media. Show me the place that really is carrying the number of screen captures to the damaging level that I am. And granted, I, I have some assistance a little bit, no doubt about it. But nevertheless, these are larger organizations that really should have dispatched a team to dig into these documents and, and shed light on them in the way they were meant to have light shed on them. Right here's proof we're looking at Unit 3, dry boil off. They knew all this early on. The emanations must have been fantastic, fantastic. If you saw the xenon, the plutonium, uh, neptunium, all these, the NIL, and even TEPCO leaked plume uh, graphs later, plume models later, you can see, wow, it went all over. It went all over. Yeah, we got hit. We got hit hard. Radnet monitors rigged or down. Sorry. EPA, go to their website and try and see what the beta gross counts per minute are. Please get back to me if you can figure it out. I can't. I cannot. It's not made to be easily figured out. Present speech, worst case model. This is the next screen capture. In terms of the off-site, we've constructed a source term with some assumptions that are, are being run that right now by NARAC. And it's responsive to the White House request that followed the president's speech in the Rose Garden the other day. There, there was a request for a, a worst case run. So we've agreed on what worst case means. We have a source term that both DOE, NARAC, and NRC agreed to, and that's being run now. The intent is to get the results and send it up to the White House. Redaction, 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 big block of redaction. I believe the president's statement was more general, like, I wouldn't expect levels. He didn't say you would get nothing. He said that you wouldn't get levels that would be harmful, more along that area. So I, I think that this should come out okay in that regard. In other words, this source term will take it down to whatever you need to make it right, sir. Just make it right. Keep sending it back. You ever get that feeling? Just keep sending it back till you make it right. So, well, sir, but the ambassador says, that, no, we ain't going to run his. Get the hell out of here. Get out of here. He's talking crazy talk, Mox Fuel. He's talking crazy talk. Spent fuel pool's been dry for days. No, we're not going to run his. Keep sending it back till it looks right. Keep sending it back until it fits this, ladies and gentlemen. I want to be very clear. We do not expect harmful levels of radiation to reach the West Coast, Hawaii, Alaska, or U.S. territories in the Pacific. That is the judgment of our Nuclear Regulatory Commission and many other experts. Furthermore, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and public health experts do not recommend that people in the United States take precautionary measures beyond staying informed. And going forward, we will continue to keep the American people fully updated because I believe that you must know what I know as president. I'm, that last little bit about me knowing what he knows as president, I don't know about you, okay, but I, I'm finding that just very difficult for me to believe. I'm finding that very, 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 very difficult to believe. I've actually read into the FOIA documents extensively and got a pretty good idea of what they knew when. I mean, before him and his family took off to South America, they knew. They already knew. Again, like I say, we got satellites from the military that can see uh, – the riding on a quarter. They can pick up heat intensity levels, radiation levels. they got boats going up and down the coast. They're talking about, I've seen gamma counts, 13,000. I don't know what that means, but if you go down the thing, it just goes all the way up in a couple or at 13,000. I can only look at the scale of numbers and try and, you know, infer from that what it means, but right there on site, some serious radiation was being emitted. So much you had to bulldoze stuff over, people going, let me read from the screen capture. Present worst case run. Didn't say you'd get nothing. He said that you wouldn't get levels that would be harmful, more along that area. So I, I think that this should come out okay in that regard, referring to this NARIC model run. The weather is, the wind direction is changing, is moving down towards south. It had been to the southwest, so we're going to keep an eye on that. This was part of a forecast that we knew as early as yesterday that the wind direction was moving down towards the south. 
We're continuing to support our guys in Japan. The principal focus of the discussions has been on the so-called Bechtel system and the logistics and the setup required for that. There's also been a couple of the questions. It looks like TEPCO has been interested in enlarging the hole in the Unit 2 secondary containment. And our guys are working on a request from TEPCO to figure out a way to enlarge that hole without causing sparks and things like that. So they're looking at some potentially other ways of cutting. I heard tell of a water jet or something like that. But that's being worked. And my understanding is the intention is to enlarge a hole so they can spray seawater in. That's how bad it is to spray seawater in. Do you think it's any better over here in the States? Look at our roads. Look at the schools. Well, don't look at the military. God knows they got some of the most badass equipment in the world. I don't deny it. But look around at everything else. Nah, not so much there. Nuclear, nah, not so much in the nuclear. They, deny. they ain't really prepared for them. Trust me on that. I've seen all the recommendations and the uh, team that went over there and so on and so forth. Nah, not really going to take very seriously the expensive, time-consuming, especially the moves that would reveal how dangerous nuclear power. You know, it seems to me one reason they don't want to uh, prepare for a disaster because if they did, you would see all the stuff it takes to prepare for a disaster. And as soon as you see that, you're going to say, holy crikey, do you have to do that with solar power? Well, no, and especially if you release suppressed technology and say you can have more than 20% efficient solar panels, and if you quit spraying the nanoparticulates in the sky and causing global dimming, right, then maybe solar panels would work effectively. Again, right now, Adina Jean in Iran is no better than Obama. He's denying his people alternative uh, nearly free energy. Nearly free because you got to build the device and everything. I don't deny the bearings wear out in however many years you got to redo it. There's a giant spinning freaking magnet. Folks, I got everyone figured to fool them to paying $100 for a unit of energy that really shouldn't cost more than $1 to $5. Tops. Tops. That's why we got nuclear power. Monopoly. Monopoly. They don't want you to know the solar panels really could be 80% efficient. You know, I started looking about building one myself, I said, if this is true about this patent suppression and that solar panels aren't allowed to be more than 20% or solar cells more than 20% efficient, I know from my dad's invention is, uh, uh, I call it a super battery. They didn't want to uh, fund his super battery uh, invention, and not at all, not at all. So they're not looking for that. If you, I began to look around and say, can I build a solar cell myself and tweak it and engineer it myself and make it more efficient. Screw the patent. Screw the government saying, I'll just build one for myself. I won't produce it or anything like that. It'll just be my own. Well, I started looking into it, found a couple sites. Sure enough, what they hinted at was you didn't have to use this or do it this way. Some modifications might make it more efficient. I was like, wow, wow, this is exactly what's going on. They don't want you to know. They don't want you to know. Again, I, I did a thing on the return of the gods the other day where we looked at a chapter in the Bible, Zechariah. In the chapter of Zechariah, I kid you not, the golden olive trees, well, it's a solar tree. Hey, a kid just invented one in Oregon a couple years back. It's like a tree. Instead of leaves, it's got tiny solar panels. Super efficient. Super efficient. So you tell me why we have to use inefficient, outdated, and suppressed and technology, well, not what they do allow us that's not suppressed is, again, archaic and outdated. It's inefficient, and they know that. They know that. Why are we getting blasted with meltdowns? Why am I worried about worst-case scenarios and what have you? Hey, man, because they're suppressing everything, all the wonderful te – the Tesla, Tesla. You know what? I'm not going to say any more about it. Google Tesla and spend a couple hours. You know what? You're not really a true American. Right, you probably learned about Ben Franklin and these other yahoos. Study about Tesla, because that guy was the most brilliant of them all, and not just in scientific terms. He made some statement about somewhere in the universe is a field, a source of all knowledge. All right, he, he was convinced it existed, but he had yet to tap into it yet. Well, I think he already had tapped into it and never even knew it the whole time, subliminally. And I happen to agree with him on that. I feel the same way. So look into Tesla, because these are the guys that – met, you know, an unfortunate end, and then where's the technology? Where'd all was his equipment and all his paperwork were seized? What happened to it? His family got a couple boxes of stuff back many years later. Look into it. Look into it. Stan Myers is the other guy with the water car. You know, Japan had a production water car just before the earthquake. Google it or look at it on YouTube. There's a video. Look at a tiny compact car. You put a hose in it, fill it up with water, you're down the road. Stan Myers, you can see him back in the 80s on ABC News affiliate, passing up trucks on the highway in his water dune buggy. Ran on water. Split the hydrogen right off the oxygen. Boom. You know how efficient that is? Guess what the byproduct is? Oxygen. 
Amazing! <laughs> Again, why do I have to take a day off my psyche? My bruised psyche, knowing what, knowing the way the world is, and at the same time, knowing the way the world should be. That just breaks you down inside, knowing all these people are paying out the butt for energy right now. Dirty, dirty expensive energy. And that's what it's all about. Energy. Suppression of information so they can control their monopoly. I wouldn't be reading you these screen captures if we had solar uh, power technology as it should be. As it should be. Charlie Miller, if, if you're getting angst about moving naval ships and things like that, the worst case scenario isn't necessarily the one you want to run. Think about that a minute. I'm not even going to repeat it. Think about it for a second. Charlie Miller, okay? I don't know who the hell a guy is. I don't know who Marty Virgilio is either. I don't know these people. I know people I know, they want to protect people's lives. They don't, uh, people I know that... The money ain't worth it at that point. The money goes to the side and it's about maybe you screwed up and you got to man up. If you made a mistake, you try to protect life and let the chips fall where they may, man. You have to stand up and take your lumps. You screwed up. Nuclear power is a dead end. Take your lumps. Let's fix it. Let's fess up. Let's do it right. Let's protect our men and women in, in you know. <laughs> First of all, I, I love our men and women of, of our armed forces, of law enforcement, especially on a lower level, especially on a lower level. Joint Chief of Staff, eh, not so much. Your foot soldier on the ground, yeah, yeah, man. I got your back. I'm trying to get your back, man. I'm telling you right now. Let me read this again. This is from the 19th. We got ships with soldiers on them, Navy men and women on those ships being blasted. Tokyo got it. I got... I got plume models where they're going offshore. This is TEPCO's models now where it blows right offshore. Clearly, clearly they got dust. Charlie Miller says, quote, if, if you're getting angst about moving naval ships and things like that, the worst case scenario isn't necessarily the one you want to run. You know, if you don't want to have to move the ships around, he's saying, why don't you do like we've been doing and go with a one source term or, you know, something small and keep doing it until it looks right. Keep sending it back until it's right. You know, holy shit, that's all I can say, man. How am I supposed to do these broadcasts without getting angry? Really, seriously. How do you emotionally detach yourself from the fact that men and women, the armed forces of my country, the United States of America that I love, I went to Washington as a safety patrol, as a safety patrol to Washington. I never forgot that. How am I supposed to react to that? If you're getting angst about moving naval ships and things like that, the worst case scenario isn't necessarily the one you want to run. Well, you know what? Let me tell you what my thoughts on that, Mr. Miller. My thoughts on that, if you have angst about moving naval ships, the worst case scenario is the only one you can run. It is the only one you can run. You know what? I'm sorry if later my soldiers and men and women look at me and say, hey, you moved us out of the way for no reason. Hey, I'll... Take the blame for it. I'm sorry. I protected you. It wasn't as bad as we thought. Hey, I'll bust my butt for it. Fire me. Whatever. I don't care. I don't care. If I moved you when there's a chance of danger, right? And judging from the overhead high-def pictures at that point, by the 19th, holy crap, oh, you should have long had them guys out of there. Long had them out of there. You know what I think all the DHS bullets are for? You guys want to know what I think they're for? I think when this wave of cancer really kicks in, and it takes five to ten years for the plutonium. That's what I read. Maybe I'm wrong. That's what I've been reading. I think we're going to have a wave of cancer so severe, and might I add, there's no cancer studies past 2007, 2009. Last night on TV, they said, good news, cancer rates are dropping. Bullshit. Bullshit. After 2007, 2009, I can't find any studies. All the studies are rehashes of the old ones produced in 2011, 2012. No one has yet to send me any recent case study since Fukushima. So I tell you now, why are they protecting themselves and getting their weapons and, and what have you in order? Hey, maybe this big wave of cancer, they're worried about what's going to happen when people really figure out what happened. Did they stood by and let us get hit? Didn't even issue rainwater warnings? Didn't even say, don't eat those green. I know it sucks that California got hit, right? And you can't buy their green leafy vegetables and almonds and what have you. But hey, do you want the economy and jobs or kids to die and a few people have jobs? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Jobs aren't that important to me. I live out of a cardboard box. Let us not get cancer. Let us not eat food laden with radioactive fallout, please. If it's all the same to you, do you mind if you just could be honest with us? 
women and children are the ones most affected. You know, and to the law enforcement, to the military, and, and to anyone out there in those areas, in those sectors, let me tell you something. Radiation, it don't distinguish between you or me or a black person, white person, a Buddhist, a Christian, an old person, and young are more affected. Yes, okay, it does kind of go after them. But other than that, it gets everyone. It gets everyone. We all get cancer from it. We all get cancer from it. You know, they say there's been a cure for cancer for years, but you know what? I'm convinced that if they had a cheap cure for cancer, they'd never allow it. They'd have to kill you. They'd have to kill you if you wanted to get it out to people. Why? Do you know how much money they make off of cancer every year? Look into it. I suggest you do. I've had a... It is scary. Scary. The same guys involved in nuclear. I got one out there on the Sumner Redstone. Go to my Hattrick Henry blog. Type in Sumner Redstone, hit return. They're all connected to control in the CBS press conference on the 19th, the big one. CBS had the feed. Sumner Redstone's connected to all them big uh, mainstream uh, media, uh, CBS. What's going on here? He's with the Cancer, American Cancer Society, plus he's controlling CBS and the feed to Fukushima. I wonder if they could all be in cahoots. I wonder if in all these years, you know what? <laughs> Look, it, do you think it's possible that there could be a conspiracy? Do you think it's possible that there could be a conspiracy? Do you have any clue what they got at their disposal for this conspiracy to hide all this stuff? The Plumgate stuff, now I'm talking about the world's largest conspiracy known to man. More agencies, FEMA, DHS, tasked with our safekeeping. Clearly, they don't give a damn. They don't give a damn. They know all about three miles, settled out of court, three mile down syndrome, family with down syndrome. They know all about Chernobyl. We have the benefit of knowing about Chernobyl, they say. The Chernobyl study, 900 plus thousand with cancer, deformed babies all over the place, northern hemisphere contaminated, a rainwater warnings in, uh, God bless them, in Oregon, gave rainwater warnings because Oregon's cared and Oregon's been a different state for many years. Fact. Fact, Michigan got hit back in Chernobyl. But did we get anything? No, cover up the conspiracy. How do they do it? How do they pull it off? It's fascism. They're all connected. Only now it's a step beyond fascism because the government is the bitch of industry. That's just a fact now. They are the bitch of industry. It's now like a corporatocracy. That's what I'm going with now. I'm kind of, you know, uh, uh, as it goes along, it begins to transform and change and and it's ever-changing, but right now I'm in the realm of corporatocracy because doesn't it seem to you that in these documents they, they say that the industry is going to determine the role of the federal government, right? And so if that is the case, I now have to ask, well, why am I even freaking voting? Well, you, why does Eric Holder say he wants to protect the right to vote? I wonder why, because it's useless? Because it's freaking useless, right? Oh, man. Is it possible that there could be a conspiracy with the ability to hide all of this. For well, we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means.